I am queuing everything up. Give me just a moment. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I always forget to promote this. Remember that you can donate via the correct views at hotmail.com. As I attempt to queue everything, since I now do the show sans any help. There we go. You know what that means. You know it. It's coming. Go. Welcome, friends, or as I always say, greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to The Correct Views. Uh, Sam I. B. Ganji doing political commentary for the media speaks. You might know me from Blasting News. I'm on Vocal now. I'm on Gab. I'm on Parlor. I'm on Rumble. Uh, many of you know that my Facebook page was taken down, which was a travesty. It was a major source of income, uh, not just from the, the Fukushima stuff that I do, but a lot of the political things that I do. And uh, donations are extremely helpful if you wish to help. The correct views at Hotmail.com through PayPal. All right, guys, we're 10 years into the disaster. Let me repeat that. 10 years. Now, see, this is kind of strange for me because... Uh, the Fukushima disaster, when it happened, oddly enough, happened during what is probably, if not the happiest time in my life, uh, the runway, the, the first days, if you will, of the happiest days of my life. The, the person who means more to me than anything in the world. The person that colored my days and flavored my food, and I mean that figuratively, and I guess literally. Anyway, um, we had gotten off of work. We worked in a nightclub, and uh, we came home, and I remember uh, as I was watching the news that day, I told her that I didn't like the sound of this at all. I had been catching it on the computer that was at work. I said, you know, I don't like this at all. And I explained to her in, uh, in great detail exactly what kind of disaster we were looking at. And uh, we watched it unfold, much to our horror, over the next couple of days and, uh, and weeks. Uh, and I introduced her to things nuclear, uh, introduced her to the poisoning of Karen Silkwood and uh, things like that. So it, it, a lot of it's fresh in my memory, I guess, is the reason I'm saying this. Because when something happens during a, a time in your life that is precious to you, when something happens during a time in your life that is very important to who you are as a person on a very fundamental level, then you tend to remember a lot of things that happen in that time period with amazing accuracy. And uh, I'll never forget, as long as I live, how I felt when I first realized what kind of cover-up was going on here. Because this wasn't something that was ambiguous at all. The problem here was obvious to anyone who took the time to care about it. And I'm a firm believer in what Chris Busby said, Dr. Chris Busby. He said, this is the single worst accident in all of human history, and he, he's absolutely correct. Now, there are those who say that uh, they love to haunt my comment line with it. Well, one guy likes to haunt my comment line. He sometimes uses two different accounts, so he can sound like two different people. And normally he comments on something that he thinks I said based on something that was written in the description. And uh, last month he didn't even come close to what I was saying. So, I don't... I, People like that, they are willfully ignorant, okay? It's kind of like people are saying, why? Why is COVID-19 decimating the health of people in California? I can tell you why. I mean, I've told you why for the last 10 years. Because 
the levels of Fukushima radiation that are hitting the West Coast and have been hitting the West Coast, which is why I said it's not safe to live. Say it with me. It's not safe to live on the coast of California, Oregon, or Washington. It's not safe to live in Hawaii. If you don't like that, then you can blame TEPCO, blame General Electric, don't invest there. Don't bother calling me a liar. Don't bother calling me wrong because I'm telling you the truth. And now you're seeing it in, in real time. Their immune systems are open for infection at a higher level than the rest of the country. And if you doubt me on this, it's a well-known fact that in terms of what is eaten and what is ingested, California tends to be one of the healthiest states in the union, and they have been decimated by this. Well, what have I said? What have I been saying and proving on this show all of this time? I said that one of the things that radiation does it doesn't necessarily kill you right away it doesn't even necessarily give you cancer and kill you later on although it certainly is going to do so in many instances rather what it does it's like a little needle that just pokes randomly makes you more susceptible to illnesses makes you more susceptible to respiratory problems particularly and the people in California those who I have been warned about it, scoff at it, because they don't want the inconvenience of what the truth is. The truth is that they should not live there if they care about the health of themselves or their loved ones. That's the truth. There is no other truth. That is the truth. All other things are not true. They don't want to face that. And the rest of the population doesn't even know, you know, that Fukushima is. Fukushima? Oh, is that is that Chinese? They have no clue. They don't even know, they don't know anything about it. It's been so cleverly hidden. And uh, one of the things I'd like to, to, to give you to share with other people who you're trying to alert to this is the, uh, the poison ivy analogy. You can consider, you can look at Fukushima and the radiation that it has produced and is producing now to be a deadly form of and a very stretched out form of poison ivy. And now everybody just logged off because they won't let me explain. That's fine, bye, see ya. Um, let's pretend you ran naked through a field of poison ivy. You ran right through the whole field, butt naked. Now, when you get through the field, you get back to your house, you put your clothes on, and you say, that I don't itch. I don't itch. There's nothing wrong with me. You people are nuts. And a little bit later, you start to itch. It didn't happen right away. You went home, you ate, you're fine. But now, now it's starting to get to you. That on a, a uh, small, small microscopic level is what Fukushima is doing on a huge macro level. By that I mean Fukushima radiation is sitting in the bodies of people and they think that they're just fine. But they're not just fine. You have time. This is going to develop throughout your life and you may be more susceptible to things like COVID-19, heart disease, respiratory illnesses, of course, cancer, but those take time. Now, we have seen the effects at a much faster rate than predicted because we know they lied about the levels, and this has been proven, of course, they lied about the levels released in Fukushima and, and exactly what kind of radiation it was. But we know that children have had a huge spike in thyroid issues, and they're saying, nah, that's just because we're testing more children. Well, it's interesting because there's nowhere else in the con nowhere else in the world, even with heightened testing, that finds that many precancerous uh, warning bells in children. You know, we're talking under ten years old here, five, six, seven years old. So the idea that th that this is uh, anything less than dire is simply either a lie. Or it's something that's said in ignorance. Guys, and I've got I've got tons of data to back this up. This is AAAS. It's a science. Sciencemag.org. The physician has studied the Fukushima disaster for a decade and found a surprising health threat. Now, 
he talks about, you know, temporary face paralysis and things like that, but there are some things in here. He does downplay the problem a bit. Uh, his name is D uh, Dr. Mashohu Tasbakura, but he done my Japan. Japanese is getting better, ain't it? This is some of what he's found here. He said, uh, Oh, and it talks about his past and where he and his girlfriend went. I'm skipping that. You, know, you can read that if you want to. That's why I told you it's at sciencemag.org. Um, many, many people came to seminars, he said, asking a lot of questions. And people were asking, whose side are you on? The non-government organizations, the government, or the people? And he said that I'm on the side of the people. And he said that at first he thought that, rings, that the, uh, the risks were going to be scarce. Um, but one student mentioned, is it okay to hug a cat that has been in the evacuation zone? And he said, well, cats don't wear shoes that can be left at the door. Therefore, you should wipe their paws. Now, let's pause there for a moment. Let's pause about the paws. If you should wash a cat's paws before you touch it, and you put, the, you put your shoes outside, of course, to keep the radiation from going into your house, which is what they're telling these people is safe. What happens when you go back out to put the shoes on and you touch the, chemi the, the radioactive particles which are on the shoes that you didn't want to bring into your house as you tie the shoes? Any chance you might ingest some of those? Shoes got to get muddy and that turns to dust in the heat. You going to ingest any of that? Because this is common sense questions here. Once ingested, radiation, by the way, can never be taken out of the body. Um, I thought this was interesting. In, his, in that first month, the risk of death rose in both genders and every age group, he wrote in the 2018 Review article on the Journal of National Institute of Public Health. The impact was most notable among the elderly living in long-term care facilities. Tuspakura and their colleagues found that among 715 residents of five evacuated Mina, Miami, here goes my Japanese again, Miami Soma nursing homes, the relative risk of death was 2.7 times higher than it was before the disaster. Well, let's, let's pause again. I thought if something was a 1% risk, we needed to freak out and protect the nursing homes. Well, then we're talking about a 2.7 2.7 times higher risk here than before the disaster. At one facility, 25% of residents residents evacuated died within 90 days. The most common death was pneumonia, uh, suggesting they died as a result of weakness, a decrease in care, and a general deterioration of the physical condition, and not from any particular disease. Well, if that's what radiation does to people who are already older or have bad immune systems, keep in mind radiation destroys the immune system and turns people into those kinds of people far, far before their time. Other health impacts emerged. Uh, Akito Ozari, a breast cancer surgeon and frequent Tusbukura collaborator, found that after the Fukushima disaster, the lag between when women recognized possible breast cancer symptoms and when they saw their doctor grew, resulting in more advanced cancer and more difficult treatment. So there were people who, they're trying to say that because they waited to get the breast cancer checked and the breast cancer got worse. But the data is showing that the cancer was either caused by Fukushima or, and this is very important, worsened, hastened, a cancer that would have already been there made worse by the deteriorated condition that a person has by being exposed to this. Again, he's not one of the people who are as concerned as other people are, but you're starting to find more quote-unquote mainstream doctors coming out and saying, hey, you know, this 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 here is decidedly bad. This is not good. And then you've got other people like the Associated Depressed here. How dangerous is the Fukushima nuke plant? Explainer. The explainer is hilarious. Listen to this tripe that they've put into this article. Uh... 
Star Wars is. One of the quotes really struck me, and it was a must hear. It said that TEPCO was, uh, and this is great, because the plant's operator, TEPCO Electric Power Company, says that the tsunami couldn't have been anticipated. Stop. Couldn't have been anticipated. The doctors and scientists predicted the Fukushima disaster before the plant was built and as it was being built. They warned that a magnitude 9 or higher earthquake would strike that area. Many of these doctors are the same, and scientists and geologists are the same people who are now saying the same thing about Bashar, Iran, by the way, another place that you should never build a nuclear power plant. You've probably never heard of the Jogan event, but according to Japanese paleontologist Kajura Minamura, this is from Frontline, it was an, it was an ancient tsunami that devastated northeastern Japan in 869, killing more than a thousand people. He was tipped off to Jogan from the most unlikely place, a poem. And uh, it talks about um, a poem that he had read, which was uh, mentioning the threat from giant tsunamis. And he came, on, um, he came out years before the Fukushima disaster, telling people who studied this, uh, these writings have been predicting this based on the timeline prior to when Fukushima was built. They said, you cannot build this here because this will happen. They built it, it happened, and then they said that it was not anticipated. Well, I just showed you that it was anticipated and they ignored the people, the, the scientists who were 100% correct. It says, uh, inside the reactor, of course, 900 tons of melted fuel remain within the three damaged reactors. Again, that's a lie. Many, uh, a lot of it is blew up when the uh, hydrogen explosion, and that is why we now have a melt out. That's why we have hot particles. That's why we have the black goo that is in some instances 50 to 500 times the suggested safe dose of, dose of radiation in just one little area of what they're calling the black goo. Separate efforts to remove the fuel pool from cooling pools inside the reactor buildings were hampered by high radiation debris and have been delayed for up to five years. They're saying it could be 40 years or longer. If the plant's pools lose their cooling water in another major quake, exposed fuel rods could quickly overheat and cause even worse of a meltdown. The melted cores in units 1, 2, and 3 mostly fell to the bottom of the containment vessels. Not true! Blew into the atmosphere in one instance. They don't want to talk about any of that. None of that. So This is why you, when you hear about the mainstream media and talk about their lies, I'm showing you now how this is spun. So you're going to want to pay attention to this. See, I know I've been going on for a moment here, but I'm spelling out to you in common sense ways how this is mistaken. For one thing, the fuel pools are three stories in the air, and they're on like, you know, they're, if somebody sneezes, they could fall over. Uh, they've been reinforced to some degree, but there's not much you can do with that kind of weight. It's like God's waterbed up there. It's huge. And of course, they've talked about the uh, fuel pools. Uh, the, excuse me, the uh, the the uh, the leaks. Uh, let me read this. Since the disaster, contaminated cooling water has consistently escaped from the damaged primary containment vessels into the reactor building basements, where it mixes with groundwater that seeps in. The water is pumped up and treated. Part is recycled as cooling water, and the remainder stored in 1,000 huge tanks crowding the plant. They wouldn't be crowding the plant if you hadn't built it there. Well, as was predicted and anticipated. They can't even get the water to stop seeping in after a decade, and yet we're supposed to believe they're going to be able to shut this down when we don't have the technology to get anywhere near it. 
They're trying to say, of course, that the water is safe for release into the ocean, which is anything but. How do we know that? Because, and you can look this up, there is not one bluefin tuna that has been caught in the Pacific Ocean since the Fukushima disaster, which does not show signs of radiation. And as we know, there is no safe dosage of radiation when we're talking about this form of radiation. Of course, the plant's got a new stylish office for TEPCO. Anything to hide what is really going on there. Here, the, the Financial Times, we've got two stories left here. The Financial Times has a particularly uh, charming number of idiots for everyone to enjoy. Fukushima nuclear disaster haunts Japan's climate change debate. It's climate change. In other words, let me, let me spell this out to you. Man-made global warming is a lie. It's a provable lie, and we know this beyond all debate. We know this from the writings of Lord Moncton. We know this from the 500 United Nations scientists, not United States, United Nations. They're not tied to America. They're not tied to Trump. They're not tied to big oil. They're not tied to anything in the United States. None of that. 500 scientists from a wide and range of study. I mean, geologists. I mean, oncologists. I so many people have gone together. Uh, meteorologists, five hundred of them who have respected careers with the United Nations, said on the day that Greta "Don't Drop the Thun Thun" spoke that there was not a climate emergency. The co-founder of the Weather Channel has produced proof of this, but they're pushing this the same way they always have. When they first started pushing nuclear technology, remember, uh, I, I was too young to recall at the time, but I've seen it in studies, some of my older listeners will know. They were saying that nuclear technology, the peaceful atom, was going to produce energy that was too cheap to meter. Too cheap to meter. Bill's horrible. Horrible. The uh, Dr. Helen Caldicott said she she wouldn't feed her uh, her worst enemy Hershey's chocolate after what Three Mile Island did, and she begs Hershey to sell her to, to sue her. She begs her to. She would love to give the information that shows that radiation has brought nothing but harm to the Earth. Nothing. Nuclear power has produced nothing but grief. But it's being pushed for the good of the bottom line. And the lie of man-made climate change is being used to do it. And while I hate socialism and I hate the far left, unfortunately, Donald Trump wasn't correct on this issue either. And obviously, I supported the man. But he simply wasn't. And if that wasn't bad enough, friends, I've got the dumb of the day. <laughs> Remember, friends, uh, don't be an idiot. You can donate at the correct views on hotmail.com through PayPal. Dunce cap of the month will be coming sometime uh, before the end of the month. How's that? And also remember as well, I've been reading the banned Dr. Seuss books uh, because you don't ban books for a lie such as white privilege. That's a lie. All right, guys, support the Guardian. Do not ever support the Guardian. That's what the top of their uh, their banner says. That's great. The Guardian, Fukushima radiation did not damage the health of the local people, according to the United Nations. Did not harm the health of the people. They're, and this is how they're defining. This is why it gets the dumb of the day. It would be funny if it wasn't so sinful. If it wasn't so dire. If the lie wasn't so evil. If children have precancerous thyroid issues now, they may not have bad health now, but that is going to grow into a cancer. Those don't count? How does that not matter? It says, concern over the potential health effects of the accident rose after reports of a high incidence of thyroid cancer of children living in the Fukushima prefecture. 
Uniscura and other experts have attributed the higher rates to the use of highly sensitive ultrasound equipment. In other words, children always have this much cancer and precancerous worry. They do. Why is it when you do the same testing in England you don't see that? Why is it when you do the same testing in Africa you don't see that? Why do you only see that in Japan? There's no answer. It says the thyroid radiation doses post Fukushima were about 100 times lower than that of, Fuku of Chernobyl. Yes, and those levels are enough to cause high levels of cancer, high levels of precancer. They lower your immunity and they make you susceptible for every possible illness. That is the unvarnished truth. That is the actual correct views. You want the correct views? That's the correct views. You can take it to the bank. That is the legacy of nuclear power. Ten years into it, friends. Thank you for listening. Please donate if you can at the correct views at hotmail.com. You can donate through PayPal. And all of the money that you give to me, I put towards a better show. Of which it's been a real bitch lately, I'll be honest, after what uh, Facebook did. So let me know you're watching. Thanks, friends. Good night. God bless.